Right, well, welcome to the boatyard. I've arrived here to do some uh, work on high seas this morning, but it is overcast and the forecast isn't too good. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our jerry can and get ourselves some diesel for this one. Like many other people, I get a bit frustrated during the preparation stage because it's always nice to get to the end result with the painting on a nice freshly looking new boat. So the sanding down and the rubbing and the preparation can be a bit laborious and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. It means you've got to sort of destroy the appearance of the boat in order to create a fresh new one. However, because I struggle with this bit a little, what I do is I tend to do one job and then switch to another and then come back to it. The idea being don't get completely utterly fed up and walk away from the job basically. On that note, what we've done is we've decided to start the starboard side of the hull. And when I get fed up with that, I go back up the top. Now what I've discovered is I've taken the pulpit off the stanchions. It's proving too dangerous to be up there without those on because you're so used to having them there subconsciously you keep reaching out for them and obviously it's a long way to come down and I'm carrying a bit of ballast so I don't want to be coming down here and breaking my neck although I'm sure a few people would <laughs> so we keep switching to jobs like this and then we come back and that way I don't get too fed up obviously it's always nice to get to the end result as quickly as possible but really got to sort of stick to it make sure it's all perfect Fortunately, because this is out the water now, I can go OTT. I'm even wet, wet and dry in this and getting it really flatted. Because of the shape of the transom, I believe this is called a reverse counter. Doing stern on moorings was always a problem. Really, really was. Done some nasty damage there. So I was tempted to put one of those corner fenders on like you see on cruisers. I know it might be a bit counterintuitive on a sailing boat but it certainly saved the transom. And I think if I put it on the rubbing strake here I don't think it would hinder the boat when it's sailing. Well I hope not anyway. This is the cockpit drain which I notice is a plastic skin fitting. That's no good to me so they're all gonna have to be replaced. I notice a lot of boats have these, and I really think it's very dangerous because a lot of them are on the waterline. You can see where the stability comes from on this boat. It really is a very steady boat. You've got that big fat central keel. You've got these two bilge keels here for support. Um, they were actually designed by a naval engineer, I believe. Those are huge slabs of metal, so they weigh an absolute mass. The rudder's going to have to come off. We've got to do the cutlass bearing. And the prop's got to come out, obviously. You know, there is a little bit of play in that, but... It really isn't as bad as I thought it would be. And that was the new prop a couple of years ago. Doesn't look like there's too many dings on there. Now, I've got a question for you viewers. I see the pin's gone, though. I've got a question for you viewers. When it comes to the props, you've got a big nut and you've got a small nut. Now... You'd think the big nut would go on first, wouldn't you? And then the small nut goes on afterwards to nip it. But I found a website that said, no, it's the other way around. So, oh, come on, there must be some marine engineers here or some experienced boaty people. Which way around does that nut go? Big or small or small or big? So, it looks like a lot of work to do, and it is. But I should be all right. Unless I keep going for other boat trips. But I'm in my element. I really enjoy doing this. Yeah, looks like the weather's going to win today. But can't complain because the weather recently has just been awesome. It's been hot, like summer's day it's been shorts t-shirts 
It's bloody amazing to be fair. So we're not going to get any boat work done today. So today's going to be a day of uh, basically doing some shopping and uh, getting washed up and laundered and stuff. So these days have got to happen anyway. So you might as well time it when it's raining. In fact, it's a good day to get the guitar out, to be honest. I don't even remember this. Very, 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 very pretty with summer. There's also some very strange things in the trees as well. I discovered them by accident. Strange as in, didn't expect to see them. I'll show you in a moment. Right, we were here taking photographs the other day. My girlfriend's very keen on photography and she was trying to get a kingfisher close up, which is proving to be more difficult than one would expect. But anyway, I noticed some strange things in some trees. And there is actually more. So there you have it, some Norfolk Broads oddities. And if you are local and you're curious where they are, you want to try and spot them, here's a little clue. I think some people all know where this is. Anyway, whoever put them there, well done, that's a great idea. Bizarre, or novel as somebody has described. Well, I'm going to try and get something done today. I'm not too sure about the weather. You know, it's amazing how the weather's changed. The other day it was a heat wave, I mean it literally was a heat wave. Now it's freezing again. We're in the space of what? A week? It's crazy. Just as expected, when the boat comes out of the water and I have to do lots of painting and scrubbing and sanding, we get another storm on the Norfolk Broads. We went from a heat wave the other week where I was actually wearing t-shirts and shorts to now it's being so windy that I can't even move the other boat that I'm on. Boat life, it's not for everybody, but you got to take the rough with the smooth, right? Right, well the good weather's back so we're going to have a munch quickly. We're going to get back to the boatyard and with a bit of luck we can get some stuff done. We really have had the most awful weather recently. We've had about two days of gales. In fact, just coming into um, Stalham now for some goodies. I can see one of the boats had partially come off its mooring. I was blowing around all over the place last night. Well, we've got blue skies now, so we've got to get to the boat yard and get our head down because uh, we really, really are behind schedule. I think there's a very good chance I'm going to be out of the water for six months. But I don't really care, to be honest, because I'm not going to run around burning out. I want to enjoy what I'm doing. And to be honest, I really am. Right, at this point, I have to go over to the voiceover because the boat's so high up and it's very, very windy. This is how I get up uh, onto the boat, or off the boat, should I say. It's a little bit tricky, but it's the only way, and it is a little bit high up. So I'm quite keen on getting the stanchions back in and the pulpit and push pit so it's safe. Um, what we're doing in the meantime is we are basically working on the bow of the boat. This is the forecastle. I'm taking all the fittings off, the windlass, the um, uh, fair leads, that sort of thing. 
taking it all back, getting it all flat. Here you can see the, um, I can't even remember what these are called now, but this is all getting sanded down and cleaned up and freshened and all reseated. So basically everything's going to be 100% as good as it can be. This is for the chain. This is galvanized, but it's a little bit old and been painted. So I just thought I'd give it all a fresh coat of paint and then figure out what color I'm going to paint it. This is the windlass. This is a moil windlass. These are obsolete now. This is about 40 years old. This has been painted at some point, but I'm going to polish this up because they can be restored and they look fantastic. The beauty of the broads is even if you're busy, there's always time to appreciate the countryside. It may be just me, but the uh, birds seem to be a little bit later this year. I haven't seen any cygnets out yet. And the geese seem to be pretty much finished with their nests. This one here has got a few abandoned ones and a few dead chicks. Um, but there's no ducklings. This is another grey lag or goose nest here. You can see they're all hatched. And see how close it is to the water. I mean, it's literally almost on it. If you'd like to become a patron on Patreon, the link is in the description. Nom 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 nom.